our lesson for today will be research methods and sampling technique. The objectives of this lesson are to differentiate the difference between research method and research methodology, classify different types of research method, and come up with the correct research method and sampling technique. To start with, let us discuss first what is research method. A research method refers to the methods or techniques researchers researchers use in performing research operations. While research methodology is the science of studying how research is done scientifically. So, we can define research method as the technique we are using in doing the research, while research methodology is the step-by-step -step on how to do the research method that you chose to perform. We have different types of research method that we can use. Number one is historical research. It deals with the past events and integrates it with the present situation. An example of this is the evolution of hard drive interface units. So um, historical research are important because uh, it deals with the study of our past and and uh, integrates that in our present situation to make a better decision. Number two is descriptive research. It describes things as the market potential of a product, consumers, demographics, and attitude. Examples of this is which cell cellular phone brand is the most popular among teenagers in Barangay Sukad, Apalit, Pampanga? And another one would be how common is anxiety disorder among senior high students? It means that if you're trying to describe an event or uh, determine uh, a particular product, you will... Uh, you will need to choose this descriptive research. And uh, among these two types of research method, I think descriptive research is, uh, is being performed most of the students. So the description of respondents. In this part, the researchers will just simply describe their respondents. For example, if we have this study of a tracer study of the Bachelor in Secondary Education graduates of PUP Taguig Batch 2011-2015. Therefore, the description of the respondents here are, of course, they should be graduate of Bachelor in Secondary Education. Another one is they should, they should be a student of PUP Taguig and from batch 2011 and 2015. So that would be the description of the respondents in this study. So we have the sampling technique now. In sampling technique, we have this called population. And population is the collection of all possible observations. For example, population can be all senior high students. And from this population, we have the defined target population. And it is the L this is the element that identifies as key informants. For example, we have all grade 12 senior high students with STEM track. So this means among the senior high students, we will choose the grade 12 with STEM track. So that is a... A defined target population and this target population will be uh, will be considered in our sampling technique so let us now define what is sample a sample is a subset or element of a population 
it means that if you already identify the target population, for example, we have uh, 10,000 grade 12 with STEM track, then among those 10,000, you will uh, get a sample. So that is less than 10,000. To do that, we will have a sampling error or margin of error. This is the bias or prejudice, commonly from 1% to 10%. So if we incorporate the margin of error, for example, for 10,000 senior high student with STEM track, if we incorporate this margin of error, the sampling or samples will be less than 10,000. For our sampling technique formula, we have the formula N, which is the sample size, equals capital N, total, po total population, all over 1 plus capital N, then E raised to 2 or squared. Okay, so let us try now to use this sampling formula. For example, we have 500 grade 11 students and we have 1% margin of error. Then let us identify the sample size n. So let us use the formula of sampling technique. So our capital N here is 500 and our margin of error E is 1%. Per, 1%. So therefore, we just substitute capital N as 500 and E 1% in margin of error. Since this is in percent, we convert it to decimal uh, notation so 1% is equal to 0 0.01 then we put a power of 2 there or squared so if we solve this using a calculator we will get a value of small n or sample size as 476.19047 grade 11 students so since we are uh, talking about uh, grade 11 students here or uh, people, then the decimal 0 0.19 will be converted to a whole number. Therefore, uh, 476.19 will be equated to 477 grade 11 students. Even we have a decimal point of 0 0.19, we, we converted it to 477 because we are talking about uh, a person here. So, 0 0.19 is still a person. So, therefore, we should not discard that. It means that uh, whatever the decimal there is, so we should uh, always or it is advisable to round up to, su to fully satisfy the margin of error. So whatever the decimal point, even if it's even if it's uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, uh, or anything, so we re we round up the sample size. So I'm hoping that is clear because uh, many of you are asking me in our uh, LMS why do we have to con uh, round up. So the reason why is that because this decimal constitute a person, so we we should. Uh, make this a whole number even if it's less than 0 0.5 so i'm hoping that makes sense okay i know that this is uh somehow contrary to what you know about round rounding up and rounding down but in sampling it is advisable to round up always because any decimal point here constitute one person okay let us have another example so, given that we have 1,000 people to sample and margin of error of 0 0.05, what is the sample size? So, we use the formula again for sampling technique. Then, we substitute N for 1,000 people and error for 0 0.05, then squared. Then, use calculator to find the answer. So, the N here would be 285.71 people or samples. So, we convert that to 286 people or samples. It means that among 1,000 people, we will, only, we will only sample 286. For example, we, need, uh, we will choose to interview uh, the respondent. So, among 1,000 people, 
we will just interview 286 people. Okay, so uh, that, that's the meaning of sample. Okay, so let us uh, talk about instrumentation. An instrument is the general term that researchers use for an for a for a instru uh, measurement device. So, ju just like survey, test, and questionnaire, and etc. So, if you will do a research, you will need an instrument to test and evaluate your date, uh, your your research. So, most of the time, you will do some uh, survey, or test, or distribute questionnaires. So, for example, is that in this tracer study of bachelor in secondary education graduates of PUP, Tagig Batch 2011 to 2015, so the instrument uh, they use is survey questionnaire. It means that they will distribute survey questionnaire to the respondents of the study. Okay, so what are the ways of measurement in a research? So, we have first the Likert scale. A measure that asks individuals to check their level of agreement with various statements about an attitude or object. So we are very familiar with this. So most of the time it is gauged as strongly agree, agree, disagree, and strongly disagree. For example, we have here uh, evaluating the brand in terms of the following statement. So number one, I would recommend this brand to others. So you will just choose one among the choices so if you strongly disagree disagree neutral agree or strongly disagree so you will you will just choose one so this is what we call a likert scale so another one is a questionnaire so a questionnaire is a measure that represents a set of written questions to which all individuals respond so an example is uh, what we have here so you may choose yes or no, or you may, sometimes you can answer in a sentence, something like that. And the last one would be a rubric. In performance assessment, this refers to the scale of measuring different levels of proficiency demonstrated in students' portfolio. Most of the time, rubric is being used uh, during um, laboratory, uh, or, for example, portfolio making. So, in this uh, in this kind of activities, uh, uh, the output is being assessed as excellent, good, satisfactory, and its improvement. It means that, for example, here, it is excellent if all required elements are present and additional elements that add to the report. So, if you satisfy this, then your assessment would be excellent. If it's only all required elements are present, it's only good, and so on. So this is a grading system that uh, being implemented when we have an output, especially in laboratory. Okay, so that is all for our research methodology and sampling technique. 